Most contemporary artists, I'm gonna be a little crude here, are full of shit. You can't produce a great work of art or a work of art which is meaningful without a powerful subject matter. You can't do one without the other. That's what makes great art. And most of it is crap. Uh, that's why it doesn't last. It doesn't last in the social consciousness. Look at David. Uh, there was a strong social theme right there. The little guy versus the big guy, the little guy's winning. How about that? A lot of my initial work when I first started doing, when I first gained fame as an artist, I was labeled as a political artist. My first exhibitions were in Ireland, everywhere from Japan to Bulgaria. But after about 20 years of that, I got a little bit tired of being, you know, being only known as a political artist and only able to do political artwork. I do masks, watercolors. I kept on thinking about these Mexican masks, I kept on thinking. Then I kept on thinking, well, how are they making these things? This is a mass tradition which has existed in the North American continent 2,000 years before the Europeans even set foot into the North American continent. The Native Americans and the well as the Aztec, my, my former people, were making masks. And I did my research. I kept on writing artists in Mexico, writing artists in the United States, doing my research on YouTube and all that, reading on it. And I started making them myself. You know, I started making these paper mache masks. Eventually, they became extremely elaborate. And I guess I got good at it, whatever that means, and eventually people asked me to teach and lecture on it. And it sort of snowballed into what it is today. I guess I'm helping become a reviving an art form, I guess. So my masks do take from very strong cultural uh, themes of life and death. Themes that the Aztecs and my uh, people from the native lineage took a very, very important. Uh, life, death, the passage or the passage between life and death, and the thin line between life and death. Uh, celebrating life, uh, celebrating death, not being frightened of death. These things are often explored in my works of art. Become expert at your craft, it's most important. Also make sure you have alternative sources of making a living. For example, I have a legal background. I'm flat out, I'm a CPA, I'm a certified paralegal. You'd be surprised the amount of people you see who come in out of the jail system or who are very poor, they really haven't had a break in their lives. It's true, some of them have not had a break in their lives. I've always been surprised. There's plenty of them who've made wrong decisions, it's true, but there's plenty of them who haven't been given a chance also. Sort of a combination of both of them. I help both of them get work and help both of them get education. I think that makes me feel good. I think it helps society as well. It sort of helps everybody. I'm very involved with the social and economic struggles of individuals and helping them survive. Uh, in my artwork product, I take on that subject matter, but also I want to help my culture survive. So, and also in my artwork, there's many, many of the same themes, uh, you know, are also pertinent in my artwork. I work with people who are dealing with struggles with life and death. A lot of my artwork has to do with life and death and the same sort of a thing. Any way you cut it, they still, all of it has to do with the social condition and making it a little bit better for people. And also, making it a little bit better from the time I leave this planet. I want to leave this planet a better place after I die than when I first got it, which is going to be hard to do the grand, grand stuff and how wrecked it is. I'll try my best.